2,600 stores offering expert advice and the best in brand name parts. Need a little help shopping for a new car or truck? Go see one of the pros at Cable Dahmer Chevrolet Geo. Compare the new Chevy Cavaliers, Luminous, and Geo Prisms, or S10 Blazers, S10 Trucks, or full-size trucks. The pros at Cable Dahmer will put you in the car or truck that's right for you at the lowest price with on-the-spot good neighbor financing. Don't give up. Let the pros at Cable Dahmer make things happen for you. Go to Cable Dahmer Chevrolet Geo on the Miracle Mile, Nolan Road, Independence. Nobody. Nobody is doing better work at better prices than Able Hands. From roof repairs or remodeling for extra living space, to extraordinary bathrooms that can include every feature, even a jacuzzi. From designing the kitchen you've always dreamed about, and helping you plan it within your budget, to turning that extra space in your basement or attic into a beautiful and usable living area. So, when you're interested in any home improvement or repair, remember, nobody does it better than Able Hands. Well, it's not over yet. 3.52 to go, and Orlando leading it by 11. Boston showing a little sign of life with six unanswered points. Speaking of basketball, on Tuesday, a rematch of the Eastern Conference semifinals. Orlando will host the Chicago Bulls at 8 Eastern time. Vern Lundquist, Danny Ainge, and Craig Sager will have all that action. Then on TBS this Wednesday, a doubleheader to kick things off on the Superstation. It'll be Denver versus Phoenix with Dick Stockton. Welcome, Dick, to our family of broadcasters with Chuck Daly and... Danny Ainge, boy, they're working Danny very hard, you know, and not paying him very much. Game two, Dallas at the Lakers with Chip Carey. That's Chip Carey and Goose Givens. Welcome to all our new members of the Turner Sports family as we continue to bring you NBA action on TNT and TBS. Now, right now, the Celtics are in a half-court trap. They came out in a 1-2-2, two, two, and it, it definitely takes a time off the clock. But that's the killer. Any time that a team runs a half-court trap on you, you get the ball into the middle of the floor, and then the press will, will falter, and then you can attack the basket either in a two-on-one or a three-on-one situation. ML Carr had never coached at any level of basketball. Of course, he played pro basketball for the Celtics. Remember his towel waving. Uh, ML Carr became general manager of the Celtics, and when he replaced Chris Ford, he interviewed some people and decided to select himself as head coach. He seemed, Hubie, as we talked to him today, to enjoy the job, but he is ready to admit, and admitted to you, of, of the veteran coach, if you are, that he has a lot to learn. Well, of course he does. I mean, it's a, a different story from just being a player. All of a sudden, now you have to worry about the clock. You have to worry about substitutions, rhythm of the game, tempo, matchups, taking people, and then put in a philosophy of offense and defense, a style of play with the team which is not what you would call a playoff team. This team won 32 games in 94, 35 games last year. They made the playoffs, made the eighth spot, but from that team, three key guys are not here. Wilkins, McDaniels, and Derek Strong. Three major contributors to that ball club. I think you said it well. There's no go-to guy uh, either when, when you get really in the clutch. I mean, Rick Fox has played well tonight. Dana Barros can play well. Dino Raja, but, but none of those would be considered at this point in the NBA uh, even to consider a go-to guy. Well, and what will happen here is next week, Purvis Ellison will come back. And let's face it, ever since he's been in the league, he's averaged only 45 games a year that he plays. He's always injured. And his but knee is not the one that was injured when he came. That's right. But if he will just help out here, they have to have some kind of an inside game. Burrow with the steal. Burrow on the break. And it's a 10-point Orlando lead with three minutes remaining. And Boston, who had played very lethargically in the third quarter and early in the fourth, now in an 8-1 spurt. All right, they were in that 1-3-1 one, one half-court trap that time. An open you can't is, give them that. It was stripped away, but the foul is called. Anytime that you attack a 1-3-1 one, one, or a 1-2-2, two, two, depending upon how they match up and come at you with the traps, get the ball into the middle of the floor. Take the traps, go over, here's your trap, go over, and now get it into the middle. And once you go into the middle, everything breaks down. Now that, they handle that extremely well, took their time, backed it out, went right back down inside. Now the Royal misses the free throw. It's still a 10-point game here. 
2.45 to go. If Boston could throw a three in from somewhere, you'd think they had a chance. But tonight, Boston's hit, what, one three, I think. Dana Barros, out of 13 attempts, he missed them both. There you Still go. a 10-point game. plenty of time here. The main thing is, is you've got to get good percentage shots here. These players, a lot of new players playing with each other. Three have never played before with each other on the floor right now. Nice. Junior Burrow with the bucket in the paint, and it's an eight-point Orlando lead, 2.27 to go. Now, see, they're coming down the floor, and they, they match up with you, but as soon as you come up here to half court, all right, now they've taken the trap off, and they're playing you man-to-man. -man. Now they're just coming across the top. That's called run and jump. Ten on the shot clock. Hardaway penetrates. Oh! Somebody got a piece of it, but Horace Grant follows. I see that. No basket. Wave the basket off. All the fans are excited. They thought the shot clock was going down. But see, this is the killer. You take it in the middle of the floor, and you take it right to the basket and force the rotating people to try to come for a block. See, you know, right Raja there. now with five personal fouls. Big foul. Five to go. again, when you're on the road, you've got to make the foul shots. Hardaway, coming into the game, was shooting at 78% clip. He's three out of four tonight. He was averaging 12 and change per game coming into this one. Well, Bobby, and you pointed out they're not big enough to foul him when he posted up down there, shooting over the top. Well, that's one thing. And the other facet is he's playing 40 minutes a game. Now, you know yourself, it's so difficult to do. Last year, we had two guys in the NBA play over 40 minutes. Vinny Baker at Milwaukee and Dana Barrows. Well, he was at Philadelphia last year. Four of these Celtics, uh, Orlando Magic players, are 40-plus. And Brian Shaw said at this point he wasn't concerned about it. And he wanted to play them now because he didn't want this team to start off one and four or something without Shaq and think they couldn't win. It, I got the feeling that he may try to ease off those minutes. But will he have the self-discipline to do that when they're winning? We'll be right back. The Eagle Vision is the first sedan in the world with the auto stick system. Porsche offers their version in a coupe. This German engineer will compare. Du kennst mich doch. Ich liebe Schwarz. So what do you what do you think, Goods? Also, what do you think, Goods? This is very good. My einfach zum automatisch, auto stick. He likes the choice of automatic or auto stick. Excellent handling without a clutch. What do you think of Vision's price? Not so much good. The screwed. No, no, we get the message. Thank you. Test it yourself. Make the call. One eight hundred two test eagle. I was really downing those tablets. I started to think there was something really wrong with my stomach. Was I relieved when my doctor said I just needed a stronger antacid tablet? Mylanta tablets are strong medicine. Made stronger than Tums. Stronger than any other antacid tablet. And made with calcium. Unbelievable. Mylanta tablets. Made stronger. Made with calcium. My doctor said Mylanta. Air Penny. Hmm. Who you guys playing tonight anyway? Minnesota. Oh, Los Lobos. I guess you going for the big numbers tonight, huh? Now I want you to work them inside, work them outside. I'm sitting triple double here. Now pin it, pin it, pin it. I want to say hello to my man Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. Yeah, 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 Garnett. We went to high school together. Tell him little Penny from the science club says hello. Can you do that for a brother? 10-point Orlando lead, 190 with 2.05 remaining. The first sellout at the Fleet Center, 18,620 here in Boston. Take a look at some of the finals tonight. Philadelphia got Charlotte, 104 to 90. Ewing had 25 as the Knicks, with a Derek Harper shot right at the end, get a victory at Washington. Miami clobbers New Jersey. Morning, leading the way scoring-wise. Wesley Person had 23. And Phoenix wins at Toronto. Doug Collins and Detroit Pistons. They get 28 from Hill and their second win in a row. And Indiana losing big to Sacramento. Walt Williams finding a spot there. Wesley missing from long range here with a minute 52 to go. Now they just had two good open threes. Neither team has a foul. Both teams are in a penalty. Orlando has three timeouts, no 20. Boston, two timeouts, and a 20. Bad foul. See, Barros went down inside that time. 
and he went for the strip, and he fouled Scott, putting him on the foul line. And Scott hadn't been shooting free throws well coming in at 64%, but tonight he's flawless. Now just watch to the left of your picture. There it is right there. He reached in from the rear. What you try to do at this time in the game is you don't want to foul in that situation because the guy was in his, his shooting unless you're going to stop him from letting that ball get to the rim. And it's got five out of five from the line, and that'll pretty well wrap it up with a minute 38 to go here. Dennis Scott with 27 points. He's been averaging 21 a game. Well, on the last trip down, the Celtics did get two good three-point shot attempts. Wesley trying to penetrate on Anthony Hardaway. In trouble inside. Wave off the basket. Three-second violation. Oh, my. Three <laughs> we saw several oh, the other night. Back. Where were we? In Chicago with all the three oh, seconds. Yeah. I thought we saw enough at least for November and December <laughs> in that game. <laughs> Only one here so far tonight. A uh, minute 21 to go, and this is going to be an Orlando victory as they're starting to clear out of the peak center already. Yeah, just play keep away, run the clock down, let them trap you all you want. Because if they foul you, you're on the foul line. The kick out to Horace Grant from Nick Anderson. And Horace Grant now has 17 points to go with 14 rebounds. Well, this has been a disappointing night for the fans and also this ball club because this is a game they definitely had a chance to win. Because at halftime, the energy was there, the forcing the turnovers was there, but then in the second half, Orlando, I'll give them their due, they've done a much better job, very few turnovers, high percentage shots, and then the great offensive rebounding. The stat man, Marty Aronofsky, Orlando, won the turnover in the second half. He's taking good care of the ball despite some pressure defense from Boston. You see coming up next on TNT this Friday night, the second part of our doubleheader will go to the west coast of Canada, Vancouver, and the surprisingly solid Los Angeles Clippers will take on the 2-1 Vancouver Grizzlies in their new home arena in Vancouver. Ryan Shaw knocks it down, and ML Carr knows he's going to have a real struggle this year. Well, the major problem with this ball club is, and for ML Carr, the people who are here this evening are accustomed to excellence. During the 80s, they were in the NBA Finals five times, won three championships. The front line, all three guys will be in the Hall of Fame, Bird, McHale, and Parrish. And before that, we don't even want to bring up the other 13 championships because we <laughs> don't have enough time to list all the guys who are in the Hall of Fame. You were talking today about 86 and 87. What was the record? Oh, 79. It's fantastic. In 86, at home. at home, they were 40 and 1. That's the best record ever in the history of the NBA. The next year, in 87, now they won the championship that year. In 87, they were 39 and 2. So for two years, 79 and 3 in that building. That's why they're expecting wins here at the Fleet Center. Without, well, how about this? Without the team. You saw another, that, you saw another that stat blow you away. Over 13 years, they were 36 and 5 on an average per year in the old Boston Arena. And they're nine inches away from it physically here with the Fleet Center. <laughs> and it, it seems like nine inches is too far away. Five seconds on the shot clock. 17 seconds in the game. Dennis Scott may as well knock that one down at the buzzer. Dennis has 29 tonight. Oh, he's had a great, great ball game tonight. But then again, we can see why he's averaging 21 points a game. Hardaway, they're still running. He gets the jam. Put the button on it. And that's 110 to 94. It's a 16-point Orlando lead, and this will be the end of this ball game. And it was a 29-20 third point, with a third quarter with 17 points from Dennis Scott that really concluded this game. And Scott finishes with 30. Hardaway 21 points and eight assists, and Grant had 17 points and 14 rebounds. We'll be back to wrap it up in just a moment.